talents that everybody has a gift or many gifts to use and when you look at today's parable you will see that God doesn't keep us accountable when we make mistakes um, he doesn't mind I think if you make mistakes if you mess up but he is keeping us accountable if we don't use the gifts that he gave us I also would like to welcome the people who join us on television today I can imagine that they are more than usual because of the weather, so welcome. Please uh, join me for the Confession and Forgiveness, which is found on your bulletin. Please rise. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the sovereign over all the earth, the wisdom from on high, our merciful judge and savior. Amen. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace, trusting in God's mercy and love. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you all the ways that we reject and undermine your steadfast love. Though you made us your people, we treat strangers with suspicion. Though you forgave our debts, we collect without mercy. Though you treat us with amazing grace, we are quick to pass judgment on others. Have mercy on us, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. To Jesus Christ, the living word, God forgives your every debt, your every sin, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. The gathering hymn today is Christ, whose glory fills the skies, number 553, in the red hymnal, 553. For, for the curia and greeting uh, on page 100, no, not page, yeah. hymn num number 157, 157. And Diane will lead us, and I ask you to join um, the ball part. 157. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
you all. Please join me for the prayer of the day which is found in the celebrate insert. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its people and you give us all that what we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. To Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his abilities. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So, take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents, for to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they will have will be taken away. 
As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, the good news of the Lord. You may be seated as we sing Jesus Loves Me and the children are coming forward. Yeah, it's fine. Jesus loves me this time. boys and girls. Good morning, boys and girls. Good well, it's good to see you all. I brought you a book. Some of you might have heard of the book before. At least most of you have probably heard of the author. The author of this book is Dr. Seuss. Are you familiar with him? The Cat in the Hat? All right. Well, this book he titled, All the Places You'll Go. And it's about places that people go. And I'm not going to read the whole entire book to you because in the light of today's story, there's one place that I like to particularly talk about. Well, anyway, there's the little guy who is going up. Congratulations, today is your day. You're, you're off to great places. You're off and away. And so they go lots of different places with lots of things to discover. See? And you may not find any you'll want to go down, so that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. Can't tell, there's no snow there, so it's not as dangerous to go out of town right now. But there's one place, all oh, the places you'll go. Look at that. Looks like giant candy canes. Castles. But there's one place that I like us to go to. There we go. This is not quite as colorful as the others, is it? What do you see people do there? Waiting. For people just waiting. Waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or the mail to come or the rain to go or the phone to ring or the snow to snow. We don't ever wait for that. It's going to come anyway. Waiting around for a yes or a no or wanting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting for the fish to bite or waiting for the wind to fly a kite or waiting around for Friday night or waiting perhaps for the for their uncle Jake. No. Or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. Now today was a story where we heard about gifts. People were given different gifts. And they were asked to use the gifts. And two of the people went and they did use their gifts. And do you remember what one person did? What did they do with their gift? They dug a hole deep in the ground, they put their gift there, and they covered it back up. They were asked by their master to use that gift. And when the master returned, he would like his gifts back and probably would like to see what they did with the gift. If you get a set of markers, do you just put them in the drawer? No, what do you do with them? You draw a picture, right? So you use the gift that you have been given. One of them, though, put the markers just in the drawer. He was waiting and waiting and waiting. Well, in today's story, we hear that that is not a good option because God said, no, that's not for you. Waiting around and doing nothing with what we have been given is a waste of time. 
Right? Why did God give you all that energy to burn off? So that you can use it. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. God wants us to go out into the world to discover our gifts. Why? So that we can tell others about the wonderful God we have. Waiting around. Digging our talents in the ground, putting our markers in the drawer, never using our winter boots. That's just not an option for us. Because God says to us today, use your gifts all the time to tell people about the wonderful love I have for them. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us certain gifts, our hands, our feet, our voices, our energy, whatever it may be. And we ask that the Holy Spirit gives us the courage and the confidence to just go out and use those gifts. Sometimes, hmm, we color outside the lines. Or it doesn't turn out the way we like it to be. But you will still love us, encouraging us to love others in your name. In Christ's name, amen. Well, thank you, my friends. Oh, jingle change, what? There we go. There is using our gifts again, isn't it? Are you ready for jingle change? Wow. Are you ready for jingle change? Yes. All right, well, that's your, using your gifts. You, God gave you feet and hand to go out there to collect some gifts. There we go. Everybody grab a pot. And don't all go at once. Go, go that way. That way. Just go that way. Be courageous. Go a different way. The gifts this month go to the food pantry as we will help to purchase food. Don't take it away yet. Don't take it away yet. I'm getting there, yeah. I hope so. All right, you can. No, we we're good right now. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we hear the good news of the Lord this morning, I would like you to answer a question in your mind. And this is the question. Have you ever been entrusted with a responsibility that scared you? Have you ever been entrusted with a responsibility that scared you. I'd like you to keep that question in your mind as we wrestle with today's story. Now personally, um, I was taken back to my high school job. I worked in an amusement park to uh, help with a food kiosk so we would make fast food. And I came to work one morning and um, we were getting ready to open for the day. Of course it was one of those big days on the weekend. So we anticipated lots of people and as we were getting ready my supervisor or the manager of this particular kiosk slipped and happened to break her foot. Well, um, the park manager came in and he looked around and he said, well, you got it all prepared, so why don't you just take it from here? I said, well, why don't we just leave the blinds closed and people go to a different kiosk? They said, no, you'll be fine. Well, that day I was a little hesitant about being fine, preparing food for hundreds of people that would be coming by ordering. And um, that was, of course, before the time of electronic 
um, slide your card, iPad kind of devices where people paid, we had actually still a paper and a pencil. And anybody who knows my math skills, my biggest worry was that at the, at the end of the day, the till would come out just the way it should be when I would need to deliver the earnings to the finance office while well, I had the job for a few more years, so everything was fine. But I was really thinking I was in over my head. I was entrusted with a responsibility at that time that actually did scare me just a little bit. Or my first call, our first call. You know, we were in great anticipation and it was a great adventure. And along comes Tuesday morning and the phone rings and I'm thinking, Oh my, this is really it. What are we going to do if someone dies? Well, that's what we went to seminary for, didn't we? But at that moment, at that moment, I felt I was entrusted with a responsibility that scared me. But God knew better. The first call we ever got was from our mentor that morning, and he said, I might not know how you feel, but I want you to know that all God asks you to be is faithful, not to save the world. That's already taken care of. And from there on, we kind of went. Now, you might have your very own stories about being entrusted with a responsibility that, frankly, scares you. I'll be showing you a video clip and no, Chevy has not paid me for this. I'm not going to get a free truck. Um, but it's a wonderful example. Actually, the gentleman that you will see here on the left is g being an internet sensation for a big, huge mistake he makes in the presentation. And um, I, will, I will have you figure out which one that is. Because when I saw it the first time, I thought, yeah, that's not a big deal. But the, for the automobile world, that was just food they needed to bash Chevy. And I'm going to have you watch this, what, one minute clip. Congratulations, folks. Thank you so much. All right. Now, to present the MVP award presented by Chevrolet, we have from Chevrolet, the regional zone manager, Rick Wilde. Thanks. Last thing, congratulations. Um, as the official sponsor or the official vehicle of Major League Baseball, Chevrolet is proud to participate in this uh, prestigious award. Um, along with our dealers, we are also extremely honored to get back to this sport uh, by supporting baseball in cities and towns across this nation. At Chevrolet, we have, um, we have also been proud of the latest and greatest uh, technology in our truck lineup which is the all-new 2015 uh, Chevy Colorado. Um, it combines class-winning and leading uh, you know, technology and stuff with uh, Wi-Fi powered by one star sitting there on the screen to recognize your performance in this 2014 World Series. I proudly present to you your set of keys to a brand new 2015 uh, Chevy Colorado. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Did you pick up which the line was that he was in for? I'm sorry, it was not loud enough. I'll have to fix that later. He presented the truck saying, and Chevy is proud to present you the truck with all of this and technology and... Yeah, that went over big. The new Chevy truck has all of this and that, and it has technology and stuff. Now, this gentleman is the regional zone manager for Chevy. Can you imagine how long it took to make the first tweet about this faux pas? It took about two seconds. And it was all over the nation. Chevy is selling technology and stuff. I don't know why all of a sudden he kind of lost it in the middle of this presentation. Was it too great of a responsibility? 
Did he draw a blank? Maybe he didn't feel good. You know, this faux pas for Chevy would be like Pastor Dirk and I saying, well, here at the church we do uh, wine and bread and stuff. I do that so often. Yeah, that's right. He does that so often, but nobody tweets for that. Well, they did for him. The poor guy. Well, we'll see what happens 10 seconds later at the end of today. One can clearly say both. When I served at the kiosk or started my first call or Mr. Rick Wildey, we seemed to be in over our head with the responsibilities that we were entrusted with. Well, I think we too are not alone and I think you know exactly what I'm getting at when I ask you, have you ever been entrusted with a responsibility that you felt was too much? Well, in today's gospel passage, we meet Mr. One Talent, right? There was Mr. Five Talent, Mr. Two Talent, and Mr. One Talent. Now it's probably going to take off here pretty quick. Yeah, why don't you turn it off for now? So Mr. One Talent gets one talent. And the master returns, and Mr. One Talent returns how much? One talent. And the master says, why are you doing that? Would you please turn it off? Just on the back. There we go. Thank you. All right. Well, you never hear the good ending of the story. It's the good news of the Lord. Well, Mr. One Talent said to the master upon his return, Well, I was so afraid of you. I was so in over my head with what you had entrusted to me that all I did was I dug it in the ground, and here's what is yours, and I don't want nothing to do with it anymore. Why was he so afraid? Well, he has an answer compared to Mr. Wildey, who we don't know why he was so scatterbrained. This one we do know. The answer is, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. Plainly put, Mr. One Town was plainly afraid of the Master's fury. Why would he be so scared? Well, we need to probably figure out how much a talent is. Does anyone have an idea how much a talent is? One talent is more than 15 years worth of an average worker's wage. One talent is worth more than an 15 years worth of an average worker's wage. So let's put that in perspective. On the last census for Madison, South Dakota, the median income was 49,000, roughly $49,000. 15 times would be 736,000. One talent. Now somebody walks up to you and says, here you have $736,000, they're mine, I'm going to entrust them to you. I'd feel a little responsible. I feel responsible for our church budget. I wouldn't know what somebody would do, and I have lots of help. I wouldn't know what to do if somebody just walks up to me and says, here you have $736,000. Keep them for me. You don't just carry them around your wallet. Besides, Mr. One Talon did listen in Sunday school. And here's why. Because Mr. One Talon did what a Sunday school teacher taught him to do when you're entrusted with money to keep it safe. In the scriptures, in the Jewish scriptures about keeping money safe, it says money can only be guarded by placing it in the earth. So what's wrong with that? 
He probably was a trustworthy neighbor, one that you could give your house key to while you're on vacation and say, would you just mind looking over it? And you're sure that after you return, you still have a house. He didn't sell it for profit. You still can walk in your own house, in your own home, and you know that Mr. One Talent took good care of it. He probably was the one that would go to church, maybe not on a regular basis, but he would know where he belonged. Right, Mr. One Talent? And he would probably be a trustworthy and responsible citizen. He took the Sunday school lesson and he acted upon it, buried the money in the ground to keep it safe. Now, I don't know for you, but that's the person I want to be known at. When you come here, you don't have to worry that at the end of the year, the church council is not able to give you account of where your offerings went. Or that you're never quite sure whether or not Pastor Dirk or I will show up for a Sunday service. Huh? Don't you want to be known as responsible, law-abiding, good citizens? That was Mr. One Talent with a high sense of responsibility. So he was afraid to mess up and wanted to protect the little that he was given, $736,000. Let me ask you more questions. As you still ponder the question of you have ever been in Mr. One Talent's shoes being entrusted with something that you have been in over your head. Is being afraid against the law? Nope. Did Mr. One Talent's act really hurt anybody? Did anybody really get harmed by Mr. One Talent's act of burying the money in the ground? And besides, there were Mr. Five Talents. I didn't even, I don't think my calculator will go as far as multiplying 736,000 by five. You need a truck to take all that money and do something with it. Now that's an amount of money even two times $736,000 would be quite a sum. But compared to that, $736,000 are just peanuts. So what difference would have had made? And there's always the what if, right? Can he really be held accountable for the what if? Because if we really can, then he could have lost it all was playing it safe, following tradition. Now I can honestly say that I have found myself in over my head and I was really afraid. It scared me. And fear is a human condition that we have. Mr. One Talon displays that very well. We're fearful and fear isn't a bad thing. I wanted my kids to be afraid of strangers to a certain respect. I didn't want them wandering off into some stranger's car or taking candy from people they don't know. Who knows? There's all sorts of people out there. So fear is a natural protection. It makes us not want to jump off buildings, unless you're attached to a bungee cord, that is. Scripture actually talks about the fear of the Lord. It's required of us. The prophets talk about Judgment Day as the day to be feared. There's nothing wrong with fear in a healthy dose. But as you faithfully read scripture, you can find, come to find out that God has never condemned anyone for failing or being fearful but for an unwillingness to try. Take Jonah. Jonah didn't like the assignment, so what did he try to do? He tried to bury himself in the bottom of a boat. And what did God do? He took him and punished him by burying him in the belly of a whale. 
God does not like when we don't try. But then when Jonah did go and use the assignment that God had given him, he was rewarded. Jonah didn't like it, but that's not our problem. Jonah acted upon what God had asked him to do. And what was the assignment? Use the gifts that I give you. Nowhere in the scripture passage says protect and hoard and bury. Because the master knew exactly what each one could do. And the opening, it says, he gave to each according to what? To their ability. The master knew his slaves. He knew the people. Why? Because they worked closely together. And there was no margin for success. There was no goals that were set. There was only the assignment, use what you have been given. Now we all have been entrusted with treasures we can't afford. We all have more than we really can credit ourselves for. Your health, yes, you can work for it, you can maintain it, but once you lose it, you know it's not in your hands. But the one that always gets to me when I read the story is the biggest treasure we have ever been given that we could not work for on our own. Pastor Dirk used that line last week. God does for us what we are not able to do. And here's what God did for us, for our one talent. He gave us Jesus, one Jesus. Now what did Mr. One Talent do with his talent? He buried it. You want to tell me what we did with Jesus? We buried him. See the comparison? Mr. One Talent buried the talent. Mr. and Mrs. One Talents buried the one talent we have been given, that is Jesus. To keep him safe. Or because maybe we were fearful that he actually could change the world and our lives, right? Because once we really know that Jesus makes a difference in our life, our life will be turned upside down. And that's scary. But God gave us each to our ability. And like everything, we need to use it and nurture it. When I was an exchange student and I left, my goal was that I speak fluently English, and I did. Well, guess what? After I came back, after many years, do you think I could still speak fluently English? No, because I hadn't used it in Germany. If you don't use your gifts, you lose them. It's use it or lose it. And that's what the story is. We have been given gifts. Our greatest gift of all is Jesus. And do we decide to keep him for ourselves? To bury him in the midst of our church? Or are we free to scatter the love and the grace? Because it cannot be squandered. It cannot be squandered. The only way we lose God's grace and love and mercy is by burying it in ourselves and not sharing it freely with the world. Now I'm sad I can't show you the end, but what Chevy did was really clever. Within 10 seconds after the first tweet, Chevy picked up the hashtag, technology and stuff, and implemented his whatever 30-second speech into a 30-second commercial with their whole big display of this truck. And they had him in the background, and Chevy now uses this as a tagline. Technology and stuff. Guess people will remember, won't they? It was either, either use it or lose it. 
And for today's gospel message, I have to say they got it. They used it. God never punishes us for failing. We will fail, period. But God will never fail us unless we don't try. In Christ's name, amen. I invite you to stand as we sing hymn number 815, 815, verses 1 and 3. as we will at this time welcome our new faith family members. You find their names printed in your bulletin. I'd like you to come up as I call your name if you're present. We gave them, uh, of course, the choice where they would like to go and do not make them go to two services. But if you like to meet them um, personally, please come to our new member reception. We'll serve cake, actually, downstairs, and refreshments, and I bet we all love to visit with each other. I will call your name, and if you please, oh, everybody will be given a towel, and why that is, is there's a real nice story about the folded towel at the head of Jesus and what it means, and so we felt that was um, very fitting as we welcome our new members. There are Ashley, Aaron, Abby, Ainsley, and Audrey Allen. There we go. Oh, there, yes, of course. Oh, there we go. And then I have a certificate. Dirk, would you like to help me? Then we can. I don't want you to work for your own here. Then we have depth cassette. If you would stay, please, then we'll all say a prayer together. Deb is coming up. And then Jacob Christensen would be Heidi Christensen's husband. They said they'll be here at 11. Jason, Tara, and Jaya Engels. Adam, Kristen, Sam, Oscar, and Rosemary Erickson. Lindsay Hansen. Deanna Heners Nelson. See, she's coming right there. Troy, Stephanie, Lauren, Lucy, and Isabella Kies, Kies, Kies. I'm working on it. It's just like Constanza. Yes, but they're not present right now. Dale, Stephanie, Shay, Mason, and Katie Labeda. Mavis Paltier. 
Nick Ashley and Chloe Podorowski, Les and Loxy Rowland, Rowland, Bob and Christine, Allie and Callista Saar, I'll give it to you for all of your family, Samantha Seitz, Tara Seitz, Travis and Susan Wicks, but we have Ronan too. How could we forget about you? Oh, he's, uh, you are on the certificate, aren't you glad? I apologize personally for not printing your name. He probably likes all the attention he can get, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. And Kari Wolt. Well, on behalf of Trinity, we're sure glad you, you are here and um, hope that you feel at home and welcome and that you all try your best to make them all feel welcome. Yes, you may have lot. Please join me for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that in your family you gather all of us under your loving wings. And it is that you sent us out from there to be your voice of love and grace. And so it is as we grow together as a family, we ask that new, young, old, we all come together to, for the one purpose, to share in your word and to do your work. In Christ's name we ask for the Spirit's blessing. Amen. Thank you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God's people share God's peace. At that point, we are going to receive the offering. And we have special musing with the offering. Please be seated.
institution. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took some bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We are celebrating an open communion here at Trinity. If you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are certainly welcome at the Lord's table.
Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Our announcements, as you see, we still have some bags left, but we had lots of the Thanksgiving bags come back, so thank you already to all those who did. And uh, if you haven't had a chance yet to help with our Thanksgiving offering, you sure can. Thanksgiving services are here at Trinity on the 26th at 7. Did you talk about the Thanksgiving service? Yes, I just did. Okay. Um, you know, I if don't you know. haven't heard me announce the I Thanksgiving <laughs> service, this is selective hearing yes. in person. The Thanksgiving service is on the 26th at 7. And you will get 100 something thousand. Um, $736,000? No. No. One of those clicks, you know, on Lights? The Chevy. Oh, Chevy. Yeah, I might yeah. get a new Chevy truck out of this yet. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> really what I want it. But I still don't get it. I mean, how many responses were there immediately? It was just all over. I don't know. Really? I have to look again. I, I would watch that clip for years and I wouldn't know what's wrong. Because it's technology and stuff, you know. You do? Yeah, stuff. There we go. We have a, one representative here, or two. And uh, Tom. Are you both speaking? <laughs> Good. Both will talk about. from Bethel. Both oh, you were... yielded to the donkeys. Okay. Jennifer, I think you will talk about stuff, right? Stuff. Stuff, right? Right. Donkeys, yes. donkeys and stuff. I, <laughs> donkeys and stuff. <laughs> and stuff, yeah. No. I just wanted to put out a quick thank you to all of you if you happen to come or not. Um, we had a great success last Sunday with our donkey basketball, and we had a great turnout. And I just appreciate all your support and help. So I told Farrell I was jumping in front of him, and so I did. So he said he would yield to something, but I won't repeat it. And now we have Bethel and Scott. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Tom Farrell, and uh, I am the Trinity elected representative to the governing board at Trinity. And basically, I'm here this morning to say thank you to the members of Trinity for the ongoing support that you give to the Bethel Ministries. As a, I would like to start with a little uh, note from Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. You will be rich, enriched every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. There were originally 25 Lutheran congregations that created Bethel Lutheran Home. Today there are only 13 of those congregations that own and operate Bethel's ministry, and of course Trinity Lutheran Church is one of those. All of the current owners are going to be listed on the back of a little thank you that we'd like to give to you following the service, which is a bookmark, and those congregations will be listed. Our message today is simply thank you for being one of those congregations who've been with us since the beginning of, in 1959, when Bethel Lutheran Home was incorporated and first opened 50 plus years ago in 1962 with a 59 bed nursing home. Since that time, Bethel has grown and added 12 two bedroom congregate apartments, the Bethel Apartments, in 1990. We opened a 16-bed assisted living center, Bethel Suites, in 1997. We began offering adult daycare, New Hope Daycare Services, in 1997, which expanded in 2000 to an intergenerational day service, serving both elderly adults and children as young as six weeks in the program, which still is unduplicated today. The expansion of additional housing in 2008 with the Bethel Cottage Homes, the complete updating of the Bethel Home in 2012 with your generosity from the Caring and Pre Preparing campaign, and most recently the addition of four apartments, eight garages for apartment tenants, and our first two new style bedroom patio homes were opened in the summer of 2014. But most importantly today, our message simply is to say thank you for your past, current and future support of the Ministries of Bethel. And as a final expression as you leave, we'd encourage you to pick up one of the bookmarks. In closing, I'd like to quote from Luke, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Bethel is certainly one of the best things that medicine has. Please rise for the sending hymn, O happy snowy day, and we shall stand, number 441. <laughs> <laughs>